Chemistry lecture number 27, electron dot structures. And the s orbital has a spherical shape and a p orbital has a dumbbell shape. Uh, electrons move around these regions of space. So remember here's the nucleus and for an s orbital, the electron will randomly move around the spherical area and then for a p orbital, here's the nucleus, the p orbital has sort of this dumbbell shape and an electron, which I'll use a dot to represent, it sort of randomly moves around these areas. Remember the p orbital, there are three orientations for the uh, p orbital. Um, every time when we draw an electron configuration, every time we have a p, there are always three lines above it. Um, so that means there's uh, three different orientations. So there's left and right, and then there's also up and down. And then there's also uh, an orientation where it comes out towards you. I won't draw that one. But three different orientations for the three different p orbitals. And we can draw a picture of the electrons moving around the nucleus of an atom in their s and p orbitals. And we'll use the symbol of an element to represent the nucleus and a dot to represent an electron. To draw a picture of hydrogen, uh, we need its electron configuration, which is 1s1, so one electron in the s sublevel. So it has one electron in an s orbital, and I'm going to draw a picture below uh, the paragraph of an electron orbiting the nucleus of hydrogen in an s orbital. So I'll draw the letter H. That represents the nucleus of hydrogen. It's in an s orbital, which is a sphere, so I'm just going to draw a little sphere around it. And there's one electron, so I'm just going to put a single dot. Okay, so that's it. That's a picture of an electron uh, orbiting the nucleus of hydrogen in an s orbital. And then again, um, the electron isn't going in a circle, it's just sort of randomly moving around this space. Um, I could have drawn it like this also. You know, I could put a dot on the bottom, left, right, doesn't really matter. The electron configuration of helium is. Uh, 1s2. Uh, below is a picture of two electrons orbiting the nucleus of helium in an s orbital. So the symbol for helium is He, and these two electrons are in the s orbital, so the s orbital is shaped like a sphere. Two electrons, so two dots, so I'm going to put the two dots like that. Okay, so there's our uh, picture of two electrons zipping around in the s orbital of uh, in a helium atom. And again, I could have drawn this as uh, like that. Doesn't really matter which side we uh, put it on. Now, most of the time, we're only interested in the electrons that are in the highest energy level, and these electrons are called valence electrons. So let's draw a picture of the valence electrons orbiting the nucleus of a lithium atom. The electron configuration of uh, lithium is 1s2, uh, 2s1. And the highest level electron level with electrons in it is the second energy level. So if you look at this, here's the first energy level, has two electrons. Here's the second energy level with one electron. We're only interested in the highest energy level. The number two is bigger than one. So we're going to ignore that. We're only going to pay attention to the electrons in the highest energy level. So, uh, the valence electron is in 2s1, and we ignore the 1s2 uh, term. So, I'm going to draw a picture below of the valence electron orbiting the lithium nucleus. So, we draw the symbol for the lithium nucleus. It's lithium, so that's what you find on the periodic chart. See, lithium, whoops, lithium right there. So, the symbol of the element serves as a symbol for the nucleus, and it's in the S sublevel, so we draw a sphere around it, and it has one electron. So we just put one dot, and that's it. So there's a picture of the valence or outer electron uh, in lithium orbiting in the S uh, sublevel. So we'll now draw a picture of the valence electrons orbiting the nucleus of a boron atom. And the electron configuration of boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, 
2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5, and the atomic number of boron is 5. Um, the highest energy level with electrons is the second energy level, so we ignore the 1s2 term. So we're only paying attention to these guys. Okay, The second energy level, the outermost energy level. So ignore that. Uh, we'll draw two electrons in the sphere-shaped 2s orbital, and then we'll draw one electron in the dumbbell-shaped uh, p orbital. So uh, the symbol for boron is the letter B. All right. So these two electrons are in the s orbital. So the shape of the s orbital is a sphere. And there are two electrons, so I'll put two dots like that. And then the next electron is in a p orbital. So I'm going to draw my p orbital like this. So these two balloons represents a single p orbital. And there's one electron in the p orbital. So I'll put it right here. I could have put the dot right here. It doesn't really matter. What happens is the electron sort of bounces around here, and then it bounces around here. But anyway, that's our picture of the electrons uh, orbiting in the s orbital and in the p orbitals. Let's draw the uh, valence electrons orbiting the nucleus of a uh, carbon atom. And this time I'm going to draw the uh, arrow diagram for the electron configuration. And carbon is, atomic number is six, so it has six electrons total. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's the electron configuration of carbon. The highest energy level with electrons is the second energy level, so we ignore the 1s2 term. So once again, this is the highest energy level that has electrons in it. We're only interested in the outermost or the valence electrons, so we ignore these guys. So we have two electrons in the 2s orbital, and there's one electron in one p orbital, and we have another electron in another p orbital. So I'm going to redraw this diagram right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So, if I were to draw uh, the picture of uh, carbon, symbol for carbon is the letter C. And then draw a sphere to represent the S orbital. Two arrows here, so I'll put two dots here. And then I've got a p orbital right here. So I'm going to go like that. And one electron. Okay. So this p orbital is represented by this line with an arrow on it. And then this line with an arrow on it. Well, I'll draw the other p orbital like that. Okay. And then. The second p orbital has a single arrow in it, so I'll put a dot like that. Okay. I don't know if you can see that very well. Okay. Uh, most of the time, we only want to see the valence electrons. Uh, we aren't interested in the shape of the s and p orbitals. So if we were to draw the picture, draw this picture again, with only the electrons and the nucleus, the picture of the carbon uh, looks like this. So you draw the symbol of the element, and then you just draw the electrons. All right, so that's this picture without all these balloon animal uh, diagrams around it. Now a picture with only um, the valence electrons and the symbol for the element is called an electron dot structure. And it's also called a Lewis diagram. Here are the steps for drawing a Lewis diagram for an atom. Uh, one, you draw the electron configuration for the atom. I recommend using an arrow diagram. Count the number of electrons in the highest energy level, and these are the valence electrons. And then you write the symbol for the element. And there are two more steps. You put uh, valence electrons uh, at the top, bottom, left, or right of the uh, element symbol. Don't put more than two electrons on a side. It doesn't matter which side you put the electrons on. 
Now, some books will tell you to add the electrons one at a time to each side in a clockwise or counterclockwise manner. This is acceptable. For right now, we just want to get the correct number of electrons around the symbol. All right, so let's draw the uh, electron dot structure for nitrogen. And the configuration for nitrogen, well, that's seven electrons, so that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there are two electrons in the 2s orbital and three single electrons in the 2p orbital. Once again, we're only interested in the outermost or valence electrons, so the highest electrons are in the second energy level. We ignore these guys. So the structure then, we draw the symbol for the element, it's N. We see we have five electrons, so we put five electrons around here. So these two I can put here, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, and that's it. Now the other way I could have done it is I could have added the electrons one at a time uh, and gone clockwise. So five electrons, one, two, three, four, five. See, you get the same structure. And it doesn't matter what side you start with. I could have done it this way. I could have started on this side instead of starting on the top and gone one, two, three, four, five. These are the same answer. It doesn't matter. Or, you know, I could have, instead of starting on this side, I could have started here. I could have gone one, two, three, four, five. This is also a correct answer. All right. So notice you would get the same structure if you add five electrons one at a time to each side, and it doesn't matter what side you start with. These are all correct answers. Let's draw an electron dot structure for selenium. And selenium has 34 electrons. So the symbol for selenium is SE and the atomic number is 34. So let's draw the electron configuration for 34. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. So the highest energy level with electrons is the fourth energy level. See? Here and here. So the highest energy level with electrons is the fourth energy level. So that means we ignore all the rest of them, all right? So we ignore 1s2, we ignore the 2s, we ignore the 2p, we ignore the 3s, we ignore the 3p, we ignore 3d, all right? We're only interested in the outermost electrons, the electrons on the highest energy level. So drawing only the electrons in the 4s and 4p levels, we get, so the symbol is selenium, and I've got what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. And then I could have also just added them one at a time to each side in a clockwise manner. Six electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. You get the same thing. And once again, you can also, I could have started here. I could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't matter what side you start on. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 27, Electron Dot Structures.